my name is Dagmar, I'm from the Digital Bunch, and today we're here to show you how we use stable diffusion in our projects. Now, recently we've shared a few reels of us doing little tests with stable diffusion and, and artificial intelligence, and it actually had an amazing feedback, and a lot of you were asking to, um, for us to do this tutorial, so here we are. And we've been internally experimenting with this, these tools because we think it's really important to have our foot in the door and really see how it's evolving. Um, it's definitely had a few great results and we've definitely had a few mixed results and you know, not everything is definitely production ready for now. But when you think about it, a year ago or two years ago, nobody ever even thought that AI would be here to help artists because this was considered to be the creative industry that robots and automation is never gonna touch. So here we are. Um, a lot of these assumptions are obviously different to um, you know what we were thinking. And um, we just need to stay on top of it really and, and see how it goes. So without further ado, let's dive into a stable diffusion tutorial and let us know what you think in the comments below. Let's start from the beginning. Stable Diffusion is an incredibly fast-growing open-source software project. It's a deep learning text-to-image model released in December 2022. Before you start, you need to install Stable Diffusion and we're not going to show it here because you can find very clear instructions on how to do so on their website. We're working with Automatic 11.11 which is the web interface for Stable Diffusion. This interface can be a bit confusing at first, but we'll walk you through it, and you'll see how it can give users a lot of features and options to play around with. We have already got a desktop shortcut to the script that opens the platform. You will find it in the files that you will install. Look for the name Web UI User. In this script, you will find the URL to copy and paste into your browser. You always use the same URL, so you can even bookmark this tab on your browser and keep it accessible. Let's start with opening our file in Photoshop. We need to work around an issue that Stable Diffusion still has. It doesn't process large images yet. We only asked it to process a small part of the image, so we need to crop the part we're most interested in and save it out as a separate file. When we open Stable Diffusion, we go to the Image to Image tab, and here we select the In Paint tab. Now drag and drop the cropped image to this area and select the elements you want to edit with a brush. Now you can pick the model you want to work with. Each model is trained to do something different, so if we're changing people in our image, we will want to select a data model that is specialized in faces and people. The one we pick here is Realistic Vision, and we will leave a link to this model in the description below. For example, another model that we have experimented with a bit is Photon, and we found that it works really well with realistic vegetation and environments. Okay, now we can proceed to typing your prompt. The way this works is that there is a positive and a negative prompt. Try to keep these as simple as possible and easy to understand. Usually, it's good to define what the elements you need to change is and add adjectives like photorealistic, high quality, 8K. Describe the lighting, natural lighting, if this is an exterior shot, and you can add the lens, like 50 millimeter lens. This is very similar to the way prompts work in mid-journey and you can play around with it to check what results you get. Now, moving to the negative prompts, this is where you can type in the results you don't want. Here it's worth adding adjectives like anime, cartoon, 3D render, drawing, artifacts, ugly, deformed, etc. Now, moving down, we get to a lot of various settings and features. A few important points here is um, to check the only masked options since we want AI to generate stuff only in the areas we selected. In this section, we want to input the value of 7, 6, 8 pixels because we found that this is the optimal resolution this model works with. Anything larger won't be as good quality-wise, and anything smaller would, will not have enough detail for our final image. We set the batch size to 4 so that Stable Diffusion generates 4 different images that we can choose from. 
We can obviously add more, but it will take longer to process, and usually one of the four images works pretty well. Now, the most important denoising strength. We usually set it to 0.35. This is a value that tells us how different the newly generated image will be from our original image. The higher the value, the more different the output. We found that at one, we get some pretty weird results like these. All we want to do here is to make this model more realistic, not change it completely, so we're pretty happy with a value between 0.25 to 0.45. Then we click Generate and let the magic happen. It usually takes about one minute on our 4070 Ti card, and this is computed locally. Sometimes we like to select the face and the body separately for better results. Then we click this folder right here to open the folder in which these images are saved. These options are pretty similar, but you can pick the one you like. Here, since we selected the whole person, the face itself isn't the most photorealistic and you can still see some artifacts on it. You can then paste it back into your visualization and here's your final result, some before and after previews. Stable diffusion is really good for tweaking clothes and even though you might still get some weird results sometimes, it does look more realistic than 3D models. We also tested fixing people that were already generated by stable diffusion and it's not as stupid as it sounds. Sometimes you really can improve the results even further. Of course, this is just an AI tool, so it does hallucinate sometimes, especially if you bump the denoise value. You can get some pretty weird, creepy or funny results. That's it for today. Now, we really hope that you enjoyed this and that you found it very useful. Now, we would love to see how you guys are using it and the outcomes that you've achieved because some of our stuff is kind of cringy and weird. Um, obviously, this is super exciting, so we really look forward to hearing your comments and let us know what else you'd like us to show you or what else you'd like us to test. Um, we love doing R&D, so honestly, this is going to be amazing. And See you hopefully next time.